Welcome to the presentation of the work Data Simulation for Full 40 PC MRI Measurements. I'm Niels Dahoon. Let's start with the motivation for this work. Cardiovascular diseases or CVDs are the worldwide leading cause of death. Therefore, having a good understanding of the anatomy and the blood flow is crucial. As the anatomy is affected by the blood flow and the blood flow affects the anatomy. Examples of this are shown on the slide. On the left you can see an aneurysm and on the right you can see a dissection. Both of these diseases are often fatal as a rupture in the vessel wall can occur. Therefore early diagnosis or even prevention is important. This requires a good understanding of the underlying blood flow. To obtain flow data two methods are typically used. One of these methods is computational fluid dynamics. This yields data that is physically based and has a high resolution. However, it suffers from model assumptions and numerical approximations. Therefore, this data is not completely patient specific. Small variations in, for example, the segmentation can have a big impact on the flow that is simulated. Another approach is to measure the data, for example using phase contrast MRI. By definition this data is patient specific, however it suffers from artifacts and noise and has a limited resolution and contrast. Typically the data has a spatial resolution of 1 to 3 mm and a temporal resolution of 20 to 50 milliseconds. This is a coarse resolution given that the blood flow in a healthy individual can reach speeds up to 200 centimeters per second. The noise in the measured data can be estimated using a model. This way we have a reliability per voxel. We also remove voxels that differ too much from their neighboring voxel and mark them as invalid and give them a reliability of zero. These voxels are shown on the left and typically only a few handful of these voxels exist per measured data set. On the right a mapping of the reliability is shown, where 1 is very reliable and 0 is unreliable. Typically the unreliable voxels are close to the vessel wall. Data simulation can combine simulations with measured data. In such a way that the drawbacks are minimized and the pros are combined. This means we can have patient specific, physics based and high resolution data. Data simulation combines models with real world measured data and can be used to estimate, interpolate or extrapolate data. Data simulation is a common approach in many fields such as geoscience where it is used for instance in numerical weather prediction. In this work we use data simulation to combine CFT methods with PC MRI measurements. In our framework we use a minimization process. Given a measured velocity field and a model we try to determine the optimal correcting factor field. To determine the optimal correcting effect of the field, we have three conditions. That is, we want to minimize the difference between the output of the model and the measured data. We also want the output of the model to have the least amount of divergence. Lastly, we want to minimize the corrections. The importance of these three conditions can be guided by the user using the alpha, beta and gamma parameter. We use the reliability per voxel, epsilon, to steer the model towards the measurement if the measurement is reliable. For voxels that have a low or no reliability, the model becomes more dominant. For spatial interpolation, the voxels to be interpolated are marked as completely unreliable. This means that these voxels will be filled in by the model while the reliable measured voxels are used as a guide. Note that, that the result we're interested in is the output of the model after the minimization. As a model we use the typical pressure solver step of the Navier-Stokes equation. 
This ensures that the flow is divergence free, physically based and stays within the segmentation. We solve this Poisson equation using the preconditioned conjugate gradient algorithm with an incomplete Cholesky factorization as preconditioner. For temporal interpolation we use a slightly different optimization function. Here we want to find the optimal velocity field in between two measurements. As such we update the first parameter of the optimization function. We add an additional step S, the artifaction of the velocity field. By artifacting the velocity field forward and backwards in time, we can find the optimal intermediate velocity field. For the artifaction, we use the semi-Lagrangian artifaction method introduced by Stam. Note that we model the blood as inviscid, as we want to simulate backwards in time. This is a common assumption regarding blood flow simulation. We solve the minimization by using an iterative process. Every iteration the cost function is computed as well as the derivative of the cost function. By using both the cost function and the derivative, the minimizer can continuously keep updating the current best guess. The minimization iterates until either the gradient value drops below a threshold or the value of the cost function did not decrease sufficiently in the last few iterations. Since the cost function is nonlinear, we use a quasi-Newton method. More precisely, we use LBFGS. For the computation of the derivative, we use automatic differentiation of the code. This way only the model needs to be implemented with some restrictions and we get the derivative for free. For the evaluation we use phantom data. That is a glass model of an aneurysm that is measured using PCMRI. A highly specialized pump is then used to mimic the blood flow through this phantom. This highly controlled environment allows for longer measurement times without surrounding tissue that can influence the measured data. This way the measured data has a low amount of noise and can be used as a reference. Moreover, an aneurysm has complex flows such as vortices and helical flow. A streamlined visualization of the measured data is shown on the left. On the right, it shows a streamlined visualization after our method was applied. The same conditions were used for the visualization. In the input, many streamlines leave the segmentation, while on the right, the streamlines stay within the segmentation. Moreover, all the divergence that was present in the input data is removed. Most importantly, the overall flow structure is maintained. This is critical for any evaluation or analysis of the data. For the remainder of the evaluation, we use the data on the right as our ground truth, as we can control the amount of noise and divergence present in this data. The lambda 2 criterion is often used to determine the location of vortex cores. As can be seen in the image, these vortex cores are at the same locations in both the input measured data as the result of our approach. This further demonstrates that the flow structures maintain in the data after our approach was applied. To evaluate the robustness of our method, we introduce various amounts of noise to the data. On the left side the input is shown and on the right side the result of our method and the reference. The top row shows a typical signal to noise ratio for PCMRI of 10. That means 10% of the data is considered to be noise. In the middle row it can be seen that even with 25% of the input data being noise, the result is really close to the reference. The bottom row shows the result of spatial interpolation, where 7 eighths of the data was removed. Yet after interpolation, the data is close to the reference. This means that with 1 eighth of the data, the method was able to reproduce the reference with high accuracy. 
For the evaluation of a temporal interpolation, we leave out one measurement and compare with this measurement. Typically, linear interpolation is used for the temporal interpolation of PC MRI data. Hence, we also compare with linear interpolation here. The middle row here shows the measured data, while on top is the linear interpolation and on the bottom is our approach. For completeness also the streamlined visualization is shown on the right. In comparison with linear interpolation our method represents the left out measured data more closely. Since our approach is physically based it covers the transportation of the flow in a natural way while linear interpolation fails to do this correctly. For a more quantitative evaluation we refer to the paper. We also conducted a comparison with related work, where we compared the velocity difference in angle and magnitude, as well as the divergence present in the data. We compare against our previous method, divergence-free wavelets, DFW, with and without cycle spinning. We compare with the finite difference method, FDM, and radial basis functions, RBF. For completeness, we also compare with one iteration of our pressure solve step, as well as our approach without the divergence term. As shown, none of the methods can get rid of all divergence except our approach. Moreover, the difference with the measured data is comparable for all approaches except our previous approach. This indicates that all these approaches remain close to the measurements. We also applied our method on real-world volunteer data, for example, on the aorta route shown in the picture. The aorta is the main and biggest blood vessel in the human body. Here, the vortices are shown in the aorta route that help close the heart valves. Spatial interpolation was used here to increase the resolution. The overall flow patterns are maintained, while artifacts and noise are minimized. As indicated by the blue circle, the flow no longer leaves the segmentation. We also applied our approach on PCMRI data of blood flow in the circle of Willis inside the brain. In this data, the signal to noise ratio is negatively impacted by the high resolution required to measure the data at this scale. As shown in the image, the green arrow shows some flow perpendicular to the general vessel direction, close to a vortex indicated by the blue arrow. Our approach corrects the perpendicular flow while maintaining the vortex. This indicates that different measure parameters can be used, such as higher resolution or shorter scanner times with our approach without compromising the data quality. In conclusion, we presented a new data simulation approach for PCMRI that can be used for denoising, spatial interpolation, temporal interpolation, yet it yields data that is close to the measured data and is physically based. The implementation as well as the comparison with related work and a data set is available as additional material of the paper. For future work, we would like to improve the validation, use more data sets and validate that all the flow features are still present in the data. We also wish to improve the performance. Currently, the algorithm is memory hungry. And the worst use case took about 45 minutes to converge. One approach to do this would be to exclude um, empty voxels from the computation. Another improvement would be to, instead of using a segmentation to use the penalty for flow outside the segmentation. Another option would be to use control forces. For instance, using the geometric potential field that was introduced by Hong et al. Currently, the algorithm does not avoid local minima. This would be a nice to have, but would be very difficult given that the solution space is rather complex. Thank you for attending this presentation. I look forward to your questions.